Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 5 of Sandwalls the Armored Heart. Well, I've been busy between this and the previous episode, and I have laid down some really basic things. First off, I dug out a couple of extra bedrooms, as by the end of the previous episode we had a way stronger influx of new people than I anticipated. And I dug out another chamber here that we can ultimately use either as a temple or for whatever we see fit. Might become one of our first skill halls as well. We'll see about that. And Dodok, the carpenter lady, has given birth to a girl. Congratulations, Dodok. Who's the father? That's uh, the interesting question. So, her husband, Lorbam, Angel Seal. All right, so Lord Bam, your newborn, uh, your newly, ah, uh, whatever. You you are a uh, father of a freshly born child. I don't really, um, I'm jealous. I'm not really jealous about anything that this guy will go through. He's sloppy with his living space. He sometimes acts with little determination and confidence. He's currently more confident and he's pleased by his own appearance and talents. He generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and he is not particularly interested in what others think of him. He's currently more shameless, more rude, more fearless, less private and more thoughtless. He starts to stutter when he's surprised and he holds his breath when he's nervous. Well, Lorban, welcome to the starting crew. Sorry, funky things that uh, that the game spits out there. Okay, and that makes up all of the miners. So Lorbam is linked to one of the carpenters. All right, all right. So I'm really eager to meet the new engraver. Is that the new one? Or is the other one the new one? I think uh, Libash Square Crystal is the new person in town, as she has really no relationships. Yep. So, Libash, I wanted to check out you. Oh, 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 I forgot something. How does Lorbam look like? I mean, seriously. He's corpulent. His very long beard is braided. His sideburns are clear shaven, and his long mustache as a, is neatly combed. His very long hair is braided, his high squeaky voice, his sunken amethyst eyes are close set. Those squeaky voices always catch me off guard. So, and he has amber colored hair. These uh, descriptions are, I, I don't like them so much as they go too much into uh, details that I don't really can uh, imagine that well. So, she has very long hair tied in a ponytail incredibly high eyebrows and uh, her heliotrope eyes are deeply sunken she has a high voice all right and her ecru skin is wrinkled she doesn't seem to be that old so our new engraver lady is very stubborn she has an active sense of humor she tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things so she's doubly stubborn <laughs> She finds helping others emotionally rewarding. She has a sense of duty. She likes a little excitement now and then, and she prefers that everyone lives as harmoniously as possible. She tends to avoid any physical confrontations, though she's conflicted by this far for more than one reason. So she would like to learn fighting. She tends to share her own experiences and thoughts with others. She tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions. She often acts with compassion. She's not particularly interested in what others think of her. She's grateful when others help her out. And, and wait, she's grateful when others help her out and tries to return favors. No, I cut it. She is somewhat quarrelsome and she's bothered by this since she values friendship. She's trusting and she likes to take it easy. All right, so Libash is, uh, in my opinion, that typical tortured artist kind of person that uh, it's a little bit um, socially awkward, but she, she would like to be socially successful. She's a little bit uh, unpleased by combat, but she likes combat. 
she she's a bit very stubborn but she she likes to be adaptive so yeah top-notch artist material anyways so let's see how far the siltstone productions went while we were browsing the personalities of our people not too far just like i had anticipated well we're still only 26 people after all so let's see what about the shale there's still shale around nice it ain't enough shale for the uh, buildings that i have in mind but whatever so let's go for the engraver's job so i'll be sticking that entirely to libash as she seems to be the top-notch person for that job i like that so what about these temples they are open for all visitors okay just double checked if they uh, are unusable or anything so people are eating over here quite pleased about that and yeah life goes on i got my plans for today and that is making a smithy as i feel like this is uh, really one of the next things that we should be doing so we're going to dig out some area down here and i'll be continuing with this uh, kind of concept here where we stay building or where we keep building things that or jeez my english where we keep building our city in a way that weaves into the workshops here we have bedrooms alongside with the storage here we have a little bit of a city quarter there down here i want to do exactly the same and we're going to go and create already one of these big old corridors here and yeah, we'll see about how that'll work out. I think I'm going to make this one wider. And let's do the exact same thing over here. And let's make sure we copy the same. Symmetry there. There we go. It's always nice to have that. Okay, another thing on my list for today is I want to put a lid on it. So that means I want to have a ceiling up above all this. So first things first, we need ramps. So we're going to make the ramps out of diorite up here. And then we're going to make mudstone floor. Well... I can't already foresee that we are not going to have enough mudstone floor available for that little building project of ours here. But, well, we gotta start somewhere, right? And this is going to be it. Wonderful. So the people of Sandwalls have now a proper, a proper goal. I mean, it'll take some time and let's uh, see what we can do. But first and foremostly, let's monitor the mining jobs. So, no mall Fountain Hazy is going at it. By now, turned into a legendary miner. So, she's really getting somewhere. Not a year has passed. That's been a lot of digging. Seriously. But, well, I surely don't want to complain about that. Instead, we are going to prepare what we can logs have ran out we don't have any timber anymore so let's see where we can murder some trees so high wood there's a lot of high wood and saguaro here those are the two pri um, primary sources of wood in this biome okay i'm afraid that this might anger the local wildlife but Beyond two ravens, there's uh, nothing that we have spotted so far. Let's hope it stays like that. Ubul digrains swacking on these trees. High wood does yield quite a nice amount of logs, as you see here. I mean, it is a stupidly large tree, after all. 
Wonderful. So down there at the stonecutter's workshops, yeah. There is non-stop working. That's what's happening there. I'm proud of these little guys. Okay. We got now, let's see, tetrahedrite if I remember correctly. So let's start bringing up the stockpiles. Then we got magnetite, I think it was. It's a nice amount of it. Yeah, there's magnetite. These are more or less placeholders for now. We're going to adapt their sizes later. But I already want to make sure that we got these. So, yeah, these will be some busy spring days for the people of Sandwalds, as we got everything in high motion. The block production results in items that are carried away immediately. We got lots of digging jobs, and we got all a lot of hauling jobs as well. So... I think we're, we're, we, we will have a couple of very busy years up ahead of us. But I'm very happy about this big heist of logs. That'll surely get us somewhere. Okay, let's see how much siltstone floor has been made. We need a total of 520 something mudstone blocks now. That is a really, really high amount of mudstone blocks. And it's but just such a small structure. I think in this game, I I really keep being surprised about the sheer numbers of uh, blocks that are required for so many things. Quickly goes into the thousands before you know it. Okay, new bedrooms in the making. I want to make sure that my friends here that have entered the city only so recently have a place to sleep at as well. Overall, I'm very happy about the productivity of Sandwalls and with the forges being uh, go with the forges going online very soon, we got also the next level of productivity ahead of us. Metal crafts, that's going to be something. But I mean, we got the fuel, we got the metals. Why not start doing something like that? Magnetite has been already hauled, but for some reason my miners are busy with hauling, I suppose. So let's change the priority. That always helps. Overrides the hauling priority. There we go. Just want these chambers to be excavated completely. As this is what is limiting me from my goal. Okay. I mean, we could go downstairs another level for the actual forges. Oh, we, we struck the Ambrock. Good old Ambrock. Yeah, so if we go upstairs here, you see there, if you go, if you, if you zoom out a little bit, ah, it's hard to see, but maybe you can't follow. Here, there's this brown line. This is one biome. I'm wriggling alongside with the cursor right now. Then we have this bright green, densely green area. That's another biome, and that's another biome. So sand walls being built between three biomes, has this distinct uh, wackiness of uh, having problems like these left and right. So yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we we got noped out by the mountain. But tell you what, it is enough to to get started with what I wanted to get started with. So we can set up wood furnace and the smelters.
we go to excavate it like that, as this will make it all a little bit more efficient. And then we are going to bring up a metalsmith here. Then a kiln. And last but not least, a glass furnace. As we are sitting on top of a uh, of, of of a desert, we should really consider a glass industry. It has been pointed out in the comment section several times already that we also have here, due to our very early access to the magma sea, a really, really wonderful situation at our hands. This is much better than it is uh, bad for us, as we have now, simply put, not a hard time bringing magma upstairs. And that is just amazing. And look at that. The humans come to trade with us. So the Silky Confederation decided that they are going to pay a visit to our little desert fortress. Mm -hmm. So welcome, you fools, to Sandwalls. I hope you brought something useful. Something that's worth our time. Apart from that, the majority of the people living here are happy. A couple of people are tendential, neutral or unhappy, but the majority is happy. All right, let's see. We're going to bring the gem bin. Look at that. We already got a gem bin with a considerable value. I really hope that this is going to work on out. Good. What do you bring me, fine humans? Cocadial. That sounds like a dog. I want it. <laughs> Whatever it is, I want it. So, they brought a little bit of drink. That's very kind. They brought some large gear. That's very kind as well, but utterly useless. As we are not human-sized. And some wool cloth. I don't know if I have that already automated, but for the sake of... Uh, Courtesy, I'm going to buy a couple of these. They also brought an iron anvil. Tell you what, we're buying one iron anvil from these humans. More here again out of a uh, gesture of appreciation. So I think I'm going to leave it just with the meats. And we are going to pay in gemstone. The dwarves of sand walls will put this uh, anvil down as a token of friendship between our two nations. I personally see the this anvil le loaded with with symbolism for the people of the dark banner, as uh, or the banner of shadow. That's that's the correct name, as this is. Uh, one heck of a special anvil. Sure, there will be tons of new anvils made in the upcoming years. Sure, that's clear. But this one was the first one we traded from the humans that came along. I think that's something special. Good, so let's go for the holy bars here. And let's make some... Charcoal, but I want to have it as a uh, work order with 10 repetitions. Okay, now we're talking business, my friends. Now we're getting metals. So I'm going to dig out some of that magnetite wherever I can find some, as some iron would be very, very beneficial. I want to get a couple of soldiers working here as fast as I can, as I th think this is just one of the best things that we can do as fast as can as we can. But uh, where where the heck is the magnetite? I know that I uh, struck some in, in some caverns, but I forgot where. 
So in these regions, ah, there it is. Whoa, look at that. There's such a big pocket. Okay, so, well, we're going to use the blueprint mode and seal off that area. There we go. In case you don't know what the hell I'm doing here, I am right now making sure that, oh, whoopsie, that nobody of my miners is going to accidentally open the caves here. As long as there is this blue um, designator above these, they won't get touched. So we got now the auto mining down and they're happily going to grind through whatever they can, but they're going to make a stop here before they open the caverns. I love this little trick, and it is not my uh, uh, I didn't discover that. Kudos go out to the comment section here again. I really am appreciating all the things that I've learned from you, friends. So, Miss Fountain Hazy is on it again, and she is dishing out the violence on the magnetite. So, this is uh, really, really important for us here as the intake of that stuff ushers in a new age of sand in, in sand walls. So let's limit that as well. And here, here you see it. It, uh, it would have been a opening already without those designators. That's why we do it. That's exactly why we do this. Okay. I also realized while I was trading that we didn't cut the remaining gems. So we're going to make sure that there's always going to be 10 rough gems, but beyond everything beyond 10 rough gems shall be cut. We are only keeping a couple of these for the sake of artifact making as saves lives, you know. Okay, let's start picking up gemstone as well, wherever we can. This is now becoming more and more important as the city becomes more and more sophisticated. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, we, we are still at our starting points, nevertheless. Oh, I can't dig that out. It's, uh, it's going to be wet if I to do so. Okay. Siltstone blocks are available. Crafting is very fast. We are really, really getting uh, along darn uh, quick. So I forgot to send away the broker. Whoopsie. The only thing I'm not too happy with is the uh, production speed for the mudstone blocks. For some odd reason, these aren't valued as high. Oh, well. Or they are, but I just uh, eat more of them than of any other material. So let's favor these over the others. So our outside area sees completion faster. Because it is quite a uh, quite a nasty little ordeal right now as we also have all that uh, area here still in need to get floored. So ostrich cock. Hell yeah, we, we caught an ostrich. Nice. So we're going to go and make some wooden cages. And I think this is also the point where we need more wood. So the ostriches are not per se aggressive or anything. They are not the their agitated version yet. <laughs> but since we are sitting in a uh, savage biome, it's only a matter of time. Anyways, this room has a lid on top of it, so we're going to call this the very first barracks. Hell yeah. So, Militia Commander, we got nobody with relevant skills. Nice, nice. 
So, well, we're going to assign the Fisher Dwarf. I'm going to take a look at Ustuth in the next episode. As I said previously, I don't want to make too many dwarf introductions in one episode, as this would bloat. But Ustuth is definitely the next one on the list, because I feel like Militia Commander? Really take a look at that guy. The Mountainous Honesties. Well, I like that name. So we're going to assign alongside the animal caretaker. I think that's okay. So Rimtar. And let's use this for training purposes. Schedule of constant training. Mm -hmm. And let's see how this will work out. Technically, they should be now picking up all the gear that we got. Practically, I got no clue what they're going to do with that. I mean, there should be gear. I know that I picked some gear when I did the uh, embarkation. A goblin axe man is visiting. A goblin axe man. This is not good. He comes from the cruxes of wickedness. He must be a spy. He absolutely must be a spy. I don't know where the cruxes of wickedness are. I think I need to look at... Yeah. The groups running this, these joints. So the Storm of Menaces. Silvery Councils. The Bald Group. The Group of Ramparts. Spiders of Rhyme. The Devil of Planning. Oh, I know that devil. The Fruity Society. So a couple of the goblins here got converted by the Silky Confederation. That is uh, really, really fascinating. So... Just want to know if this guy is from our enemies directly or where this uh, crazy dog is from. Well, the cruxes of wickedness. Well, if I overlooked it and you noticed it, let me know in the comment section. But I will, uh, I will have to check out on my own. I was so sure that we had a uh, suit of gear here, but well, it doesn't matter that much as we will get ourselves some wood coal in very soon. As soon as this furnace is finally working, I mean, seriously, what the hell? What is keeping you so busy, my friends, huh? Okay. So we got a high master metal crafter, but we're looking for a armor smith here. So Saksul Stukoshisan. Uh, well, what a name. So Saksul, we're going to go and we're going to need a uh, lot of iron gear. And tell you what, we're going to make a really. Uh, yeah, let's let's make the full full order. I don't care. I want to have the entire suit together. Breastplate, gauntlet, leggings, high boots. Oh, we don't have the uh, high boots. The sand. The civilization has only the low boot tech. It's the very first time that this happens to me. I only heard about it before. That this can't happen. 
So we're going to smelt some magnetite now, my friends. Some wonderful, wonderful magnetite. I don't know why these work orders are not being uh, signed there, but little do I care at the same time. Let's do this manually if it is that what it's needed, what it needs. And yeah. So we got ourselves our forges down. And I have signed it the wrong way. Good thing that I double checked. So here we go. I'm going to unassign Zaxul for, or well, I'm not. Technically, I could assign her to just the uh, armor smithing job. I think I, I need to do this. So let's do this. Armoring. There it goes. Armor. And we're going to put this on her tab. And now... There we go. So she's only going to do assigned tasks now. Even more people have arrived. So yeah, this must have been the override from the 300 people still when we began. So yeah, I'll take it as a part of the story, okay? We're, we're just going to say that this is just what it is. We have a refugee situation, so tons of people come here. Let's just wipe with it. <laughs> Righty right. So I do spot a weaponsmith al alongside of the new arrivals. A high master weaponsmith. Zonic bean vessels. Beans. Dang it, man. You could have had some more badass name than Beans, but whatever. I'm not judging. I'm just uh, noticing. Anyways, this makes the matters all the more pressing in terms of gear making. But this is another day's business, my good friends, as it is time to take a break here. So thanks for watching you all. Next episode, we're going to pick up more lumber and we're going to make more metal we're going to forge us some weapons and i'm pretty sure next episode we're going to have our first ironclad warriors going on here so let's assign that high master weaponsmith to this and assign our first su uh, suit of iron short swords i take the short swords here because i feel like these are pretty ideal and we are going to edit this uh, work detail into weaponsmithing and armoring. There we go. So we can assign the other dude to this one as well. No, the high master weaponsmith. There it goes. And then we can assign Zanek, the high master weaponsmith, to the same procedure that we did there as well so he's not going to be busy with other small time business okay one last thing and then i'm out for today my friends i thank you for watching we're going to dump a uh the, the cages over here and our first artifact is in the making a position one so Drop me your comments down below, a thumbs up would be appreciated, consider subscribing, and check out the description box. You'll find my link to the Discord server there, where I post my daily artworks that I do, and, or, well, the AI does it, but uh, that's the point of view. Anyways, there's a lot of nice people around there. Check out my Twitch channel where I stream Fridays and Sundays in the evening hours of the Middle European time zone. And also, Patreon, Paypal and Buy Me A Coffee are there for you. And check out also my new channel membership system, which allows you to preview all the stuff that I have pre-uploaded if you participate. Thank you a lot for watching and thank you a lot if you are supporting the channel. I deeply appreciate what you're doing and that all being said, have a wonderful day and see you soon.